न्यूजीलैंड की एक ऐसी फैमिली जो कि दुनिया के अठानवे ममालिक का सफर तय करने के बाद अब पाकिस्तान पहुंची है पाकिस्तान सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेल मी योर नेम योर वाइफ नेम एंड योर सन्स नेम Okay so my name's Gavin Gavin Steiner it's my wife Sarah and you got Harry there and Oscar is our youngest when and how okay. did you arrive in Pakistan um so this time so this is our fourth time back in Pakistan we crossed over from Amritsar we came across the land border into Lahore and we were picked up from the border and brought into Lahore city uh, you have visited 98 countries and how many countries you have to explore the, the main goal is to basically expose and show our kids as much to do with culture religion history as we possibly can and as far as that like pakistan ticks all the boxes it's there's so much history here who give the idea you and your wife to travel all over the world well who was the person behind this trip <laughs> well my wife is a real influence on the travel thing so my wife's father actually came to pakistan in 1969 we've actually got his diary and we've been reading through it and pakistan featured hugely in his diary so it's always been really fascinating for us to come back and sort of walk in his footsteps ma'am why are you forced to uh, yeah why you insist your husband your <laughs> sons uh, to travel all over the world I'm easily and forced <laughs> easily forced. Uh, oh, we started off and we wanted to go traveling for a year and to learn about the countries. But the more that we got into different countries and we really like to travel places that are less touristy and that less people visit. And the more we found ourselves learning about these places, we just got even more hungry to learn more and more and more and wanted to see. And Pakistan had been on our dream list to visit for so long. and we learn about our kids we learn about each other we learn about the world and just people and um the hospitality in pakistan is outstanding and can't be matched anywhere that we've traveled how you differentiate the pakistan and other countries um definitely pakistan for friendliness and hospitality can't be matched it it really is outstanding for hospitality friendliness and people are genuinely very kind and curious and interested to see what we're doing here during this time uh, summer is in pakistan yes. so who decided to eat mangoes uh, in this summer <laughs> and uh, about the harissa lahori risa yes. it is also heavy food who decided to eat in this summer <laughs> okay. in pakistan well okay the mangoes we had no idea pakistan was so famous for mangoes but so this year we're here and it's july end of july now and we didn't realize that is the mango festival mango season so that was like a dream come true especially for our kids who love mangoes love fruit but this harissa we tried last we were here last december in the winter and it's much colder and a deal brought us to this harissa shop and as soon as we came back this time i said can you still eat harissa at this time of year so we were looking forward to coming back already how <laughs> you think kachi lassi after the mango absolutely i think i'm made up of lassi actually i think i'm topped up with lassi <laughs> is it a heavy food to eat um it is it's um it's very hearty gravy so i guess it's a it would definitely see us see you through to the morning people say we should need it in the in this heat um i love it anyway but i can see how it's a good warming meal for a cold okay tell me what you do in the new zealand and uh, after how much time you plan to travel the any other country and uh, when you will go back to the new zealand okay so we've been traveling now for five and a half years you mostly live in the travel you mostly in the uh, travel uh, history uh, so is it not uh, affect uh, to your children uh, education um that's a good question um no so we we really really focus on the education as well is really important to us um in new zealand i'm a teacher um so that's helpful too but uh so we do homeschooling uh which means we spend a couple of hours in the morning doing their schoolwork and they have textbooks that are from new zealand and in the afternoon we're out exploring the cities exploring the countries and we call that world schooling and we're learning about the world so 
Did you learn Urdu language, Pakistani Urdu language? Oh, sorry, sorry, a little bit. I'm not so okay. <laughs> what kind of uh, words you can speak in Urdu? Oh, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot there. Ask Kevin there. <laughs> People mostly say after the heavy food, haripa. Ah, oh, haripa, haripa. Okay, we'll remember that one. We we always try. We always do our very best to um, learn the basics because everyone tries exceptionally hard to speak English to us. So we in turn um, learn the basics. Um, salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. If I talk with you in Urdu, uh, uh, you can understand the words? You want to give it a try? Okay. Uh, I'm asking you, how are you? 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 Is he angry or normal? <laughs> okay. No. No with you? <laughs> no more, it's a good one. Okay. You don't understand in Urdu. <laughs> no. Yeah, if, if anyone said to you, Asalaamu Alaikum, what you will answer? Uh, wa Alaikum Salaam. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, any other words you have learned like uh, Haripa and any other word? Um, i tell you one thing that's kind of stuck with us as a family is um, Bismillah. So there are sort of words that we, I mean, I, I love the greeting, Salaam Alaikum, I think it's, and you just see people's faces light up. And they love it. So for us, that's, um, that's what it's all about.